Please stand by. We're about to begin. Good day and welcome to the NCD Alliance webinar conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Katie Dane, CEO of NCD Alliance. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thanks very much and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this NCD Alliance webinar on Tuesday the 8th of May. Um, before we get into the agenda, just a couple of housekeeping points that many of you will already know, but just to, to re reiterate, um, all of our slides and the recording of this webinar will be available um, on our website um, after this, after the, the webinar. And as well, throughout the, the, the conversation, we'll be having um, Q&A sections after each of the main agenda items. So please do um, write your, your questions in the chat facility in the left-hand side of your, your screen. If we could move on to the next slide. Um, today we've got a packed agenda for you because there's an awful lot going on at the, the global level on um, NCD advocacy. Uh, obviously we're just a couple of weeks ahead um, of the World Health Assembly um, as well as things really heating up in New York for the, for the UN high level meeting on NCDs. So today what we thought we'd focus on um, is the launch of our um, Enough campaign, um, which is our campaign for the UN high level meeting. Um, secondly, to give you an update on where we are in terms of the preparations and process for the 2018 UN High Level Meeting on NCDs later this year. And then thirdly, the main part of the webinar today will be really doing a bit of a deep dive um, into the World Health Assembly that's, that's taking place um, in a couple of weeks in Geneva. Um, a lot of NCD agenda items um, this year, obviously mainly because of the high level meeting, but lots of other um, related items um, as well, and a huge number of side events uh, which will walk you through what we know so far. Um, and then we'll also just give a quick update of some of the, the key dates looking ahead um, in the lead up to the high level meeting. So next slide, please. In terms of who will be walking you through each of these agenda items, uh, we have Lucy Westerman um, from the NCD Alliance, Priya Kneissen, who will talk through the high-level meeting, and then Jessica Beagley, who will uh, do a tag team with the other two on the, the World Health Assembly, so an NCD Alliance team uh, set of speakers um, today. So with no further ado, let me pass over to Lucy to talk through the launch of our very exciting um, Enough campaign for the UN high-level meeting. Lucy. Hello everybody, it's uh, a lovely to speak with you today, wherever you are, I hope it's sunny. Um, next slide please. So uh, many of you will have seen through social media and other, other places um, such as our various publications that we have recently launched uh, the campaign for the 2018 high level meeting. Uh, that we are leading and uh, in following months and months of consultation and development, uh, we launched it at the end of April and the campaign is named Enough and our tagline is Our Health, Our Right, Right Now. And it's definitely ensuring that NCDs are being seen as not only a health challenge but an urgent social justice um, and rights issue and that uh, they're affecting people everywhere. Uh, and therefore we're compelling governments to move from the rhetoric and commitments to actually making, taking action. Next slide please. So some of the comments um, and inspiration that went behind the campaign, as you can see there, these are the types of quotes we were receiving from people as they were feeding into it. And um, there was a strong sense of injustice of the challenges that people were facing in their day-to-day -day lives, the frustration, the lack of action. Um, there's a lot of outrage about NCDs and enough speaks to that outrage. It, it punctuates it and it definitely um, you know, draws a line in the sand or a full stop, so to say, and opens the door for optimism and opportunity moving forward. Next slide, please. So with enough, what we've seen so far is um, some pretty exciting developments in the past month or so. So not only have we just launched a website, which I'll talk you through in a few minutes, but we've also launched several new explainer videos. You can see a sample of one in the top corner there from Priya talking about the, the history and the background behind this high level meeting this year. But there are some others explaining enough as a campaign and also the importance of the high level meeting and others will be uh, coming out over the coming weeks. 
And we're also connecting outreach uh, to new influencers and champions this week, which is really exciting. We're looking forward to expanding the net of people who can amplify this, this campaign and, and get the word out there and put some pressure on governments to, to be doing a lot more. Uh, we've got a lot of digital assets available to, um, to everybody to use. They are, there are several av available such as the logos in English, French, Spanish, Russian and Arabic as you would have seen the logos on the first slide of this part of the presentation. Um, and there are others such as some of the videos that have been subtitled in those languages and um, other FAQs and other resources that are available in multiple languages as well. Please feel free to use these resources in your own communications. Uh, there are guidelines available to do this at the enoughncd.com website. There are lots of opportunities for everyone to engage and amplify um, this, this campaign. And one of the biggest ones to look forward to is the, uh, so what I'm calling the Social Amplification Day on the 14th of June, which is around the time the uh, negotiations on the outcome document will commence. And so we want to really start making some noise on social media. So details will follow. There'll be a thunderclap, but we'd also love everybody to be rallying around that day to make lots of noise and get enough NCDs uh, trending. Next slide, please. So just a quick walkthrough of the Enough website if you haven't visited it already. The URL is uh, enoughncds.com. Uh, on it you can find various bits of information, the, the sort of fundamentals about NCDs, about the high level meeting, um, and bits and pieces in terms of news and events that are coming up and that you might need to know, social media links, um, and also NCD champions. So as, as you know we're recruiting and, and identifying influencers and champions who have messages of, um, of um, compulsion to do more and to be engaged and so we are we're sharing these and they will become social media cards that people can use through their own social media. Um, so we really encourage you to come and visit and use some of those in your communications. Uh, next slide please. The other part of the website that's really exciting um, and gives you lots of opportunities to engage um, are are designed to be very interactive and so you should add to them and to share as well. So there's a section called Take Action which gives ideas for instant actions, quick and easy things such as sharing messages and tweets and so on, um, building momentum which take a little bit longer but um, will definitely ramp up the impact of your actions and then going the extra mile which is more things like organising events and activities um, and meetings with uh, influencers. So uh, please check that out and see if there are things that you can do and see what you can do to go to the next, next level. There's also Voices of Change and we encourage everybody to come to the website and submit your own Voices of Change in response to the question, what have you had enough of and what needs to change? Uh, and these messages can again be shared through social media but they could also be used through our um, various advocacy um, such as the civil society hearing and other um, advocacy submissions. Uh, so we really encourage everybody to share their, share their experiences, share where they've had success stories in countries and what they think could be done better in other places. So we're very open to hear, hear what you have to submit there. Um, and then another up and coming um, element of the website is the map of impact which will show where some of, the, some of the events and activities related to the Enough campaign are going on, uh, where some of the voices are and where people are talking about um, NCDs and Enough and, and be participating in the campaign. Um, and there will be opportunities for you to submit to that too. So if you've got news, we've seen uh, recently there's been a little bit of news around NCDs for example in uh, the Caribbean region. So news around um, the high level meeting and your own campaign activities can be submitted through that map and added to the map so that we can see how, how global the movement really is. Next slide please. And finally for my section, um, I'd like to just uh, draw attention to some of the fantastic ways that the Enough message has been integrated um, in, in different uh, network members' communications. So we've seen the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, for example, using the Enough message um, and logo in their forum banners and social media. We've seen it in various publications and newsletters such as uh, ISN, um, IUHPE, 
the South African NCD Alliance. Um, at the recent mission briefing in New York, there were digital signs that had the, the hashtags, so it was um, the, the main hashtag for that particular event. Uh, YPCDN, Australia's Prevention First campaign. So it's really been great to see not only the logo out there, but hashtag being used, and um, we're looking forward to seeing that happening even more. Thank you to everybody who's got on board so far, and please, if you're if you are using enough. Um, please let us know. We'd love to keep track of it and to, to tell people about it and to share your messages as well. Um, and uh, we look forward to working with you more in, over the next few months with the Enough campaign. Next slide, please. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Lucy. G great, great presentation. And for those that haven't um, had a chance to have a look at the campaign website, really, really encourage you to do so. It's got some really, really useful tools and resources um, on the high level meeting on obviously the the, the kind of um, the uh, the enough um, campaign materials um, and lots of really interactive stuff on there with the the add your voices and and in the future the map map of impact a um, couple of questions have come in for for you Lucy firstly in terms of the um, the hashtag uh, can you just clarify what the hashtag is for for the enough campaign for everyone yeah, sure. So that we could distinguish it from various other enough campaigns that are out there. It's not a it's not a brand new word, so we've needed to uh, distinguish it. It's enough. E n o u g h n c d s with the s on the end, uh, with the hashtag at the start, obviously. So if um, if you look back a couple of slides, you should be able to see it. Um, where is it? Even on the most recent slide, enough in use. It's uh, it's in there, but we'll be. Uh, if you check out our, our social media threads, you'll be able to find that it's um, it's quite prominent there already. Great, thanks. Um, and and are people allowed to subtitle um, the Enough Video campaign into our own uh, language, or does it need approval prior to sharing on social media, etc.? Oh, that's an interesting question. So we've got several versions of it already. We've got it available in French and. Spanish, um, and we have a couple of other languages becoming available. Uh, we'd need to just double check in terms of making sure that it's accurate, but it should be fine. Please um, get in touch with either myself or Ximena, and we can um, coordinate that with you. Great, thanks, Lucy. Questions are coming thick and fast now. Um, concerning the the kind of materials, what what's their content, and are they open access? Uh, at the moment, the materials are still a lot being updated. Yes, they're currently open access. Uh, there are some bits and pieces that are still being added to, but there was a lot that we wanted to, to get out before the, uh, we actually had the content available. <laughs> um, but yes, generally, the majority of things are open access. There may be some template letters and so on that need to go through a um, through an email sort of method of uh, confirming who people are. But yes, generally, generally open access. Great. Um, and we've also got a, a, a message from the Healthy India Alliance to say that they're planning um, uh, organising a Walk the Talk India level parallel event to the Geneva Walk the Talk event, and they're planning to use the resources and, and the logo, which is which is great. That's terrific um, to hear. We'll talk a bit more about Walk the Talk a little bit later as well. So fantastic news. Great. Yep. Excellent. I think I think that's all the questions for now on on the enough. So thanks, Lucy, for that, and let's let's keep moving through the um, through the program. Um, building upon the enough campaign, obviously the whole focus of of our enough campaign is in order to generate political priority and political awareness for the high level meeting. So let's pass over to Priya to give an update on where we are in terms of the process and the, the advocacy side of our work on the high level meeting. Thanks very much, Katie. So um, after quite a few months of waiting for the process to kick off, things are now very much in full swing in New York um, and as well in Geneva um, for in the preparatory process for the high-level meeting. So I'll give a quick update on sort of where, where we are. Uh, next slide, please. So this is an overview really setting out the details of the high-level meeting. It will be Thursday, the 27th of September, a full-day meeting um, during the normal UN working hours of 10 to 1 and 3 to 6, leaving time for lunchtime events um, and morning and evening events sort of around those timings. It'll be at the UN headquarters in New York during that high-level week of the UN General Assembly, which is really a huge advocacy win uh, as uh, 
as to something that we were really keen on having um, agreed by member states. So it's really good to see that there is appetite to have the high-level meeting when heads of state and government are in New York. Um, the meeting will take place around the theme of scaling up multi-stakeholder and multi-sectoral responses um, to uh, for NCDs in the context of the 2030 Agenda. Um, as you can see, it's quite a lengthy title and there's quite a lot packed into that. Uh, there'll be an opening segment, uh, a plenary session, and, and two parallel um, consecutive multi-stakeholder um, panels, um, followed by a closing segment. Um, in terms of participation, it will be, of course, governments, all UN agencies, civil society, private sector, philanthropy, academia, et cetera. And for an outcome, again, this is, this is good to see that this was agreed in New York um, to have a concise and action-oriented outcome document. And that will be agreed um, in advance by consensus through intergovernmental negotiations that will take place in New York. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in just a minute. Next slide, please. So this is a slide showing the updated timeline. On the bottom there is the informal preparatory process. So this is what's happening in parallel with WHO, um, some of the different regional forums that have been taking place, um, some of the different uh, commissions that will be uh, launching papers that may feed into inputs. And then on the top there we have the formal preparatory process that really kicked off around February when the co-facilitators were appointed. And we're now um, almost halfway, which is a little uh, daunting to think about that we're almost, we're almost there, which is, which is great. Um, and so things ahead of us are the zero draft of the outcome outcome document, the interactive civil society hearing, and then of course going into um, the HOM itself in September. Next slide, please. So in terms of some um, updates from New York specifically um, in the preparatory process. Last week on Wednesday, the 2nd of May, we co-sponsored an informal briefing for member states on the HLM together with the missions of Brazil, Denmark, Jamaica, the Russian Federation, and WHO. And this was really um, an informal briefing in the sense that we had a few presentations from um, some statements from member states from the co-sponsors as well as the Office of the President of the General Assembly and and Italy and Uruguay as co-facilitators of the process. All of the member state speakers very much focused on, on the urgent need for action, um, the fact that we have very many commitments at the global level, both at the UN and at WHO, and that it's, it's beyond time to turn those commitments into tangible results. Um, there was also mention and discussion of the need for a people-centered response, a focus on financing um, that was mentioned by, by Denmark, Brazil, Jamaica, uh, a few others as well. And then also the, the focus and, and the, growing, um, the growing support for inclusion of mental health and air pollution as, as very central components of, of the NCD response. Um, Additionally, we have some technical presentations from WHO on the, on the current status of the NCD response. Um, we had Dr. Ophira Ginsberg, who's based out of New York University, who spoke on behalf of the Union for International Cancer Control. And this is a spotlight on, on cancer prevention and control as an example of health system strengthening and implementation of WHO best buys and, and really to, to show member states what can be achieved um, specifically with action on just one of the NCD and so that really helps um, make things a little bit more clear uh, when talking about a lot of very technical items that, that member states in New York may not have a good grasp on. And finally, we as NCDA presented on financing for NCDs and gave a summary of the recently concluded conf uh, global dialogue on financing for NCDs that was in Copenhagen, as well as sharing our, our six campaign priorities. Um, and there is a summary available on our website. Next slide, please. So one of the huge wins from the recently concluded modalities discussion was the agreement to hold an interactive hearing for civil society and other stakeholders as part of the preparatory process. And this is a really, um, really important convening of member states and civil society and other stakeholders. And it will take place on Thursday, July 5th in New York at UN headquarters. Um, again, this is an opportunity for civil society and stakeholders to share their priorities for the outcome of the high-level meeting with
with member states. Um, so in, member states will attend. So the co-facilitators, Italy and Uruguay, will be there as well as the Office of the President of the General Assembly. Um, and the um, and, and all uh, member states are invited and encouraged to attend. So as part of our advocacy, we're very much um, calling on all member states to attend to ensure that they are there to listen to what civil society and stakeholders have to say. Um, of course, civil society, so NGOs who are in consultative status with ECOSOC, meaning that they have a valid UN badge um, for New York, can attend as well as other civil society organizations um, and stakeholders listed on the slides. So looking at private sector, academia, um, philanthropy, et cetera. So the accreditation process is, is now open. Um, this is online. And again, the links on the slides will be available and live when we share the slides after the webinar. Um, so the process to attend the civil society hearing and the high level meeting is a little bit um, is a little bit lengthy in that the first step is to be accredited to attend meetings at the UN. Um, so again, if your organization is already accredited, meaning that your organization holds a badge to attend an ECOSOC badge to attend meetings in New York. Um, then you do not need to complete this accreditation process at this time. So this process is only for those organizations that do not hold um, accreditation or a badge for New York. So, so with this process, it's open on the UN's website until the 18th of May. This is for organizations and not individuals. So organizations, so one focal point for each organization, submits this accreditation process. And it asks things like a statement of intent. So why is your organization engaged in, this, in the NCD response? Essentially, why should you be attending this high-level meeting um, and the civil society hearing? So WHO will conduct pre-screening of all applicants for accreditation just to make sure that these are indeed valid organizations. And then the President of the General Assembly will share um, the final list of organizations with member states um, on a no objection basis. So meaning if, if any member state has a question or particular issue with a potential organization who's requested accreditation, um, then WHO will follow up for clarification. Following this process, then separate registration forms for the civil society hearing and the high-level meeting will open likely around May 20th um, or that week, um, and will be open for uh, probably about two weeks or so, um, two to three weeks. Um, but again, the final timing will be posted online. So once these separate registration forms are posted, then individual participants can register to attend the hearing and the high-level meeting as part of an organization's delegation. So normally, the maximum number of delegates per organization is five, but this number will be confirmed when the registration forms are online. Um, one thing to note that's really, really important is that this accreditation process is for the civil society hearing and the high-level meeting itself. So if you do not complete the accreditation process by the 18th of May, um, you will not be able to attend the hearing or the high-level meeting. Um, and I can answer any questions um, when, we, when we get to the, that stage. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the civil society hearing is an opportunity to share um, priorities for the outcome document and then really serve as inputs in, into those early drafts of the outcome document. Um, so there are actually quite a few possible inputs into this zero draft which we are expecting to be released in early June. Um, that timeline slide a few slides ago suggested the 2nd or 3rd of June. Um, so we, we will be expecting it then. Um, as you can see, there's, there's quite, a, a, quite a long list here including the 2011 Political Declaration and 2014 Outcome Document, the WHO Best Buys, the UN Secretary General's report that was um, launched earlier this year, um, several meetings including the Montevideo uh, Declaration and Roadmap from last October, the outcomes of the, of the uh, Copenhagen Dialogue on Financing, the WHO's Global Investment Case, um, uh, 
uh, that really makes a case for investing in MCDs that will be launched later this year, just on the eve of WHA. Um, and quite a few other um, inputs. So all of these will serve as, um, as, um, as, as inputs into the zero draft as well as the negotiations that will follow. Um, again, negotiations are likely to start in mid-June, um, so that gives member states a little bit of time to, to read through the zero draft and formulate their comments. Next slide. So as you can imagine, things are very much in full swing here uh, with NCDA and I know with many of you around the phone in terms of preparations for the high-level meeting. One of the things that we are doing is we um, are developing a proposed outcome document based on the campaign priorities um, that I think many of you have already seen. Um, we are finalizing this internally and then we'll be sharing it for uh, consultation. Um, for approximately two weeks in the, in the coming days. So we will, of course, share this via email, our newsletter, and our social media accounts. And the idea is for this to be ready for advocacy is prior to the zero draft of the outcome document. We will be sharing it with the co-facilitators, member states of New York and Geneva, and really encourage um, others to use this as well. Um, for the interactive civil society hearing, um, we have, we will, Sorry, we've got um, some resources that can be useful um, in terms of formulating different responses and inputs to the hearing. And then we'll also be suggesting speakers and helping to coordinate any statements that, need, that might be taking place. Um, we have yet to see a concept note for the hearing itself, but we'll be sharing that information as soon as it is available. Um, in terms of resources, again, our website, um, we really encourage everyone to visit that um, and suggest any materials that you think might be missing. Uh, and then also the President of the General Assembly or the PGA's website on the high-level meeting on NCDs contains quite a lot of information on the process, the outcomes, and, and participation um, for the HLM itself. Next slide, please. So switching gears just a little bit um, from the very processy side of things that are taking place in New York to some of the WHO level um, inputs into the HLM, we have WHO's High Level Commission on NCDs, um, and this is really giving an idea of where they are in the process. The Commission had their third meeting on Monday in Geneva, and this was to review and discuss the first draft of the report. The report will then be um, online for consultation from the 9th through the 16th, and then will be launched on June, 4th, uh, June 1st. Excuse me. Following that, on the 14th of June, there will be a mission briefing in New York. Again, this report of the Commission is meant to serve as input into the preparatory process for the high-level meeting. So that 14th June mission briefing will really be to sensitize missions to what is the recommendations are of the high-level commission um, and to make sure that takes place around the start of the, of the negotiations for the outcome document. Um, so I'm going to pause here and actually turn it back over to Katie as she was at the meeting on Monday of the high-level commission to share some of the takeaways from that. Thanks, Bria. Um, just, just very briefly, um, yeah. So the high-level commission meeting took place yesterday here in um, Geneva. It was, a, it was a bit of a marathon, I'd say. It was, a, it was a ten-hour um, meeting with, with great attendance from across the commissioners. Um, none of the heads of government who were, you know, either involved or chairing, co-chairing the commission were, were there, but they were represented at least by their minister of health, which was great. I think in total there were something like six or seven ministers of health in, in the room as well as a lot of the non-governmental um, commissioners um, as well. Um, Sanya Nishta was, was chairing um, the, the meeting, um, and the main focus was really to, as, as Priya said, re review the preliminary draft of the report that we, we've now seen. Um, and that report obviously had the, um, had the input from the technical consultation that was held in, in Geneva back in um, April that uh, a few people on, the, on this webinar um, will, have, will have been at. Um, obviously, the whole ambition of the high-level commission is to, is to really kind of set the bar high for the high-level meeting. Um, however, I think as, as we've said on previous webinars, it's a fairly 
political um, process, I'd say, obviously with a number of different governments around around the table. Um, but the the conversations were generally, you know, th that we do want to be coming out with bold and innovative um, ideas, as well as to an, an extent, you know, reiterating some of the um, solutions and interventions that we know do work, but haven't really been taken up at the country level as much as we would have, have liked to have seen. However, as you can imagine, you know, there, there's a lot of different views um, around the Commission from different government perspectives, as well as different stakeholders. So it's, it's certainly an, an interesting um, process and I understand that you know that there's a real ambition to get the report um, as, as final as possible in the next week or so so that then we can be sharing it publicly for the online consultation um, that Priya mentioned so I think that's it from my side back back to you Priya thanks very much Katie um, so we'll move right along to the next slide please I think it's uh, frozen on my end, but I will go ahead and uh, start talking. Um, but uh, so the, the WHO Civil Society Working Group on MCDs um, was the other WHO process um, that convened, that Dr. Tedros convened um, to serve as input to the high-level meeting. So this is a group of around 23 individuals who represent various um, um, sectors of the MCD response, if you will, um, so the different diseases and risk factors, including mental health use, et cetera, um, and regionally representative as well. Um, and so this group had their third virtual meeting on Wednesday, the 2nd of May. Again, members of the working group have divided into three work streams to deliver on their different, um, um, three different uh, aspects of, of, the, of the working group. And these are looking at developing key messages and an overall narrative for the high-level meeting. And the idea is this is something that civil society um, around, around the world really can, can adapt um, as, as for the HLM, looking at mobilizing networks across and beyond health, as well as cultivating high-level political champions. Um, they are also coordinating advocacy activities around WHA, around the Walk the Talk event. And one of the really interesting components of, this, of these um, working group calls are the regional updates on the HLM preparatory meetings and events. So, um, that is, is, is quite interesting to see what different members of the group are, are doing in their own countries and regions to really ensure high-level participation and buy-in for the HLM. Um, the group will next have a call on the 19th of May to discuss progress and share those, the first draft um, of, um, of their outputs as well as an in-person meeting during the World Health Assembly on Wednesday, May 23rd. And this will be to, again, discuss those work stream outputs and hopefully to, to finalize um, so that they can be shared more broadly. Next slide, please. So we went through quite a lot, um, as you can imagine. Uh, there's there's quite a bit to to, to look forward to and, and leading into this HLM, and so you know what what can we expect in a nutshell? I think there there are quite a lot of different initiatives and reports feeding into the HLM. I gave only a snapshot. Um, there are many many others that are are meant to be feeding into this process. Um, UNGA, the UN General Assembly in New York, is a very uh, crowded week in general, but this year I think it's 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 really uh, quite different in the sense that kicking off on Monday, there's the Nelson Mandela Peace Summit. Tuesday is the opening of the General Assembly. Wednesday is a high-level meeting on TV. Thursday is a high-level meeting on NCD. So that week is going to be very, very packed. Um, we have never before had two health-related high-level meetings in the same week. This, again, comes with its opportunities and some challenges. Um, an opportunity to present that one health approach, the, the shared solutions, co-benefits, comorbidities, et cetera. Um, but then, of course, the challenges in terms of, of um, high-level attendance to two different health-related meetings, et cetera. 
Um, again, as we've mentioned this before, but New York is very much not a health hub. Uh, there's very limited technical capacity on health and NCDs, and even more specifically in the New York min missions. They rely very heavily on the Geneva counterparts um, and technical experts in capital. Um, as, as we can imagine, there's, there's quite a significant divergence in political views um, and ambitions for the outcome um, of this, of this uh, high-level meeting. Um, I think very many in New York see it as an opportunity to, to deliver on, on some of those commitments that have already been made, and others see it as, as um, a chance to perhaps water down some of the commitments um, and potential actions. Uh, in this sense, the CARICOM leadership that we've seen since 2011 really um, in New York and Karatzi um, from the Caribbean region has, has really been instrumental in driving the, the agenda. And so that will be something that we'll really be looking to again. Um, and um, for that, CARICOM is actually receiving some additional support um, from WHO to help, uh, to help them in the negotiations and, and preparatory process. Um, we can, of course, expect some intense industry lobbying. I think that's no surprise there. We've see, been seeing that over the previous HLMs, but then even more so in the past year, um, especially around the calls for more um, implementation of the WHO best buys around things like alcohol, sugar-sweetened beverages, um, and then, of course, tobacco. Um, but I think we can really expect some, some intense lobbying around that, um, anything on taxation, regulation, legislation. So that's something that we as civil society should really be prepared for um, and, and have those counter arguments to what we know the industry will be saying. Um, and finally, we know that a one-day meeting is not going to be the end-all be-all of, of the NCD response, but it is indeed an important milestone in what is in a, a long process. Um, and so we're very much trying to, to make sure that this is a political meeting. Um, we're not expecting to rehash any t technical terms or technical outputs that WHO has done already, but very much reinvigorate the response at the political level. Um, so I will pause there for any questions. Next slide, please. Great. Thanks, thanks very much for that detail, Priya. Really, really useful. Um, and I think, as you mentioned, the, the 5th of July civil society hearing will be a really, really good opportunity. So really encourage people that um, haven't seen that accreditation process to, to get onto it and to, to, be, um, to be applying to be able to attend um, if, if possible. Um, a few questions have come in about the high-level meeting presentation. Um, firstly, one relevant to what we were just talking about, um, if, if people can't attend the July civil society hearing, Priya, is, is there a process that they can submit comments and, and feedback online? Sure. Um, we have not yet seen an online process for, for feedback. Um, if so that will be coming shortly, we hope. However, if the UN does not have an official online process for consultation, we as NCDA um, are, of course, very happy to take questions and statements that people would like to have shared um, in the meeting itself. Great. And I think I'd add on top of that, Priya, that obviously we're, we're really keen to get input on the proposed outcome document that we'll be developing. So that's, that's one opportunity um, in terms of you know, engaging in what the NCD Alliance is, is um, pushing for, at least. And then I think the other opportunity is hopefully the civil society hearing should be webcast. So for they, those that aren't able to attend in person, there'll be an opportunity to, to listen and to watch, to watch in. Um, a kind of similar complementary question to that one, Priya, is um, what do we expect the role of civil society to be during the actual UN high-level meeting on the 27th of September? Sure. So there will likely be an opportunity for civil society speakers during those two um, multi-stakeholder panel sessions. Um, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but the themes for that one is looking at financing for entities and um, universal health coverage, and the second one looking at multi-stakeholder, multi-sectoral partnerships for, for NCDs. So it's likely that there will be speaking roles there, um, and uh, as potentially um, in some of the other sessions as well as the plenary session, perhaps. Um, all that will be finalized in, in the coming months. Great. 
And I think in addition, what we should all be doing as civil society is to be encouraging our governments to include civil society on government delegations, which some governments have a tendency of, of doing um, automatically. Others need a little bit of encouragement, I'd say. Um, but there, there are, there are um, often in modalities resolutions, it's actually specified that civil society can be part of government delegations. So an important one to, to think about of actually how to, to get to the high level meeting itself and get access. Um, question from Michelle, um, in terms of obviously the back-to-back -back NCD TB high-level meetings, Priya, how can integration of um, the two be, be highlighted? Yeah, thanks very much for that question. So um, we as NCDA have been sort of working with the TB civil society to, to see how we can best complement. Um, from the civil society perspective. And then also it's really encouraging to see the co-facilitators of the two processes, so Italy and Uruguay for NCDs, and then Japan and, and Peru and Barbuda for uh, TV. They have regular meetings with each other to make sure that they are sort of um, working together and, and they understand that this is an opportunity to really highlight the, the linkages um, between the two health issues and how that relates to the broader development agenda at the UN in New York. So I think um, there, there, we will hopefully see something in the outcome document, and that's something that we will definitely be following to see where the opportunities are to, to make the links um, between some of the shared solutions to, the, to those challenges and, and shared risk factors for both TV and MCDs. Great. Thanks, Priya. Um, and hopefully there will be some side events that will focus on the, the integration. I mean, it's, it's good to see at the World Health Assembly that there are a few that are focusing on the links between NCDs and TB um, as well, which is which is good. Um, uh, building upon that, we've got a question around side events, Priya. Uh, so are, are there plans for side events in New York? Um, and do we at this stage know, you know what, what they'll be focusing on? How, how will the side events work? Sure. So the application for official side events inside the UN will not open until June. Um, there are definitely plans. Um, I think several member states have it, including the co-facilitators, um, some of the CARICOM countries, I'm sure, and, and a few others have it on their radar. Um, we as NCDA will likely be doing something during the week, of course. Um, I would suggest everyone does not um, aim for Thursday, as then we will be spread quite thin. Um, again, that week is, is quite hectic, so I think um, and if we can spread out as much as possible, again, Katie said that there are likely to be some side events on the integration between TB and NCDs and how those, how those relate to, to the 2030 agenda and, and the development agenda. Um, I, I, there are no um, concrete side events concept notes just yet, as it is, again, quite early in the process. Um, so in terms of sponsoring it, I'm afraid I can't answer that question. Um, but again, there are several member states who are interested, um, and it's likely that there will be some official member state website events on the Thursday afternoon during that lunchtime itself. Um, so we as, as a civil societies will um, be able to attend those um, going through the uh, approval process to, to get um, passes. Great, thanks. Um, and in terms of, uh, we've had a question around kind of, uh, we, we mentioned in one of the slides the fact that um, uh, we can expect, you know, a certain level of industry, um, you know, interest and interference perhaps in in the high level meeting and, and the outcome document negotiations. I think it's fair to say in terms of uh, where that where that is coming from, it's um, it's you know, big tobacco, big alcohol. Um, and you know some parts of, of, of big food um, that are obviously highly interested in and in, in what's going to be being discussed. Um, as, as everyone knows, I think you know the, the best buys um, have been uh, were fairly contentious um, in terms of the kind of cost-effective interventions that all governments should be taking forward for NCDs. Um, and we know that uh, you know there's a, there's a focus in there on on taxation, on regulation, legislation. Um, so industry obviously kind of concerned concerned about about that I would say. Um, there's another question here which is quite interesting, Priya, that I'll pass to you, which is around um, you know where, where um, a government doesn't have a national NCD alliance or perhaps necessarily an active civil society movement. 
what can we recommend so that um, we can get the government to be really interested in the high level meeting? Are there any learnings from other countries in a similar situation? Oh, great, yes, that is a very interesting question. I think there are opportunities there to perhaps identify then um, looking at perhaps some disease specific organizations if there are any in that country um, working on, on some of the, the more common um, NCDs within the country. So, for example, perhaps cancer or diabetes organizations in TSA then have contact with the ministries of health. I think that would be the first um, step. Um, we, on our website, do have, um, have um, we do have resources for template letters to heads of state and government um, that can be adapted to ministers as well if, if the head of state or government contact is a little difficult to come by um, in a country where perhaps the HLM isn't on the radar. But I think the, the first step it would be sensitizing um, someone in the ministry to this opportunity. Um, I think highlighting the burden of, of disease um, within the country and the opportunity um, presented by the high-level meeting, um, if that country is also implementing some of the best buys or has some policies and interventions that um, are really successful. I think that the HLM is also an opportunity for member states to highlight what they are doing. Um, so that's something that you know, if, if um, we can we can follow up on, offline as well and, and see if we can workshop something that might be useful. Thanks, Bria. Um, final final question, which I'll which I'll take um, is around um, a question around the information on that last slide that seemed to kind of be preparing us for uh, a fairly low key event with with limited outcomes. Is this assessment based on intelligence or, or on experience? I, I I would say that um, you know we we want to be pushing hard for the high level meeting. We're really focusing on getting heads of government, heads of state um, there. Um, to demonstrate political leadership. We're wanting to get a strong outcome document with strong commitments. Um, but I think we've all got to be aware of, obviously, the, the political environment that we're working in is is challenging. Um, and there are a lot of governments out there that, you know, don't want to see this high-level meeting be a, be a particular success in the way that we would want to see it. Um, so I think it's more just kind of tempering um, expectations for the for the high level meeting and making sure that we're all seeing it as an important milestone in a in a longer term process and not some cliff edge that once you know 28th of September comes our, our work is done it's obviously from experience over the last two high level meetings we've got to be seeing this as part of a long term term process i think that i think we've covered all of the the questions around the high level meeting so thanks very much Priya and if anyone else has questions around the high level meeting keep them coming and we can address more of them um, at, at the end as well so moving from the kind of New York side of things with the high level meeting to the World Health Assembly in Geneva in a couple of weeks um, let me pass over to Jessica Beagley who will walk us through um, each of the relevant agenda items from an NCD perspective over to you Jess Hello everybody, good to speak to you. It's that time of year again <laughs> and we are just under two weeks away from the World Health Assembly which will run from the 21st to the 26th of May in Geneva as I'm sure most people around the phone are well aware. Um, this will be the first World Health Assembly for Dr. Tedros um, as well as Svetlana Axelrod and the new WHO leadership team. Um, it marks the 70th anniversary of WHO and also coincides with the 40th anniversary of the Alma Atta Declaration. Um, reflecting both of these themes, there's a strong emphasis on health for all in the events that are being organized around the week. And you can see some key sources for documentation on this slide. And there's the NCD Alliance WHA resource page, which is intended to be a, a one-stop shop, um, both for your policy and advocacy related needs. Um, and then there's the official WHA documentation, of course, on the WHA website, um, as well as um, it's worth noting that the preliminary WHA journal um, still isn't available. This came out on the 1st of May last year, but seems to be slightly delayed this year. We've heard that the NCD agenda item is currently due to be discussed on Thursday, um, and also that the GPW will very, very likely come um, early on in the agenda and take one to two days. Um, but of course, this will be confirmed once we get a preliminary journal. Um, directly before the WHA, um, there's the PBAC, and directly afterwards, there's the 143rd WHO EB meeting, and you can see the sources for those on the slide as well. And as usual, um, the sessions, the official debates, will be being live streamed, 
um, and you can follow those remotely at the link on the slide. Next slide, please. And sorry, I've just seen the comment coming in saying that I'm not speaking quite loudly enough, so I'll speak up a bit. Thank you. Um, in terms of the NCD relevant agenda items um, being covered at the World Health Assembly, and there are some listed here, um, it's worth noting that we won't be covering all of these on the webinar, but it's worth having on our, our radar. And the items that we are presenting on today are the ones that we're planning on submitting statements for. Um, so we look forward to engaging and coordinating with people around those. Next slide, please. Um, so the, the most relevant agenda item, no surprise, is the um, item on preparation for the third UN high-level meeting on NCDs. Um, the report is relatively lengthy and covers where we stand today, what barriers there are to countries implementing, um, what barriers there are to countries achieving SDG target 3.4 by 2030. Um, it goes into a bit of detail on the 2018 UNHLM preparatory process and also lists some assignments given to the Secretariat um, to be completed by the time of the UN high-level meeting. Not all of them directly related to the high-level meeting itself. Um, the World Health Assembly is invited to note the report. Uh, we've also heard that there will be um, a resolution due to be um, adopted um, on the UN high-level meeting, um, and we've heard that this is around the theme of attendance by heads of government and heads of state. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so just to look briefly at where we stand today, uh, there's no reminder needed that there's um, a great deal of progress needed, but just a few facts and statistics to help support and contextualize our advocacy. Um, we know that the probability of dying prematurely from the four main NCDs declined by 17% between 2000 and 2015, um, but that this rate of decline is insufficient to meet the SDG target 3.4. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of follow-up on the commitments made at the 2014 uh, UN meeting on NCDs, um, Countries were due to develop national NCD plans and national NCD targets, as everybody knows, I'm sure. Um, but out of 194 member states covered in the WHO Progress Monitor on NCDs for 2017, only 48% um, have achieved those two targets. Um, and 138 have demonstrated very poor or no progress towards implementing those time-bound commitments. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of one particular advantage that we have this year, um, the Appendix 3 of the WHO Global Action Plan on NCDs has just been updated, so we're really looking at recommendations based on the very latest policy, um, the very latest evidence-based policy. Um, there are 88 recommendations covered in WHO's adapted version of Appendix 3, of which 16 are best buys, um, rated as being extremely cost-effective. Next slide, please. Um, one point of the uh, paper on the UNHLN that's particularly worth uh, drawing notes to, it's the same as it was in the EB paper, um, but draws attention to particular barriers and gaps to the NCD response. These will largely define what gets discussed at the UN high-level meeting, um, and the commitments made at the UN high-level meeting uh, urgently need to address these particular bottlenecks. Uh, there's one addition in the text since the paper that since the version of the paper that was discussed in January, and that's that in the section on industry interference, there's now specific reference. You can see the text uh, on the slide there. The text on enacting and enforcing bans or restrictions on exposure to tobacco and alcohol advertising promotion and sponsorship is new. That's good to have that flagged, but we have also noticed that um, a particularly useful sentence has been deleted. Um, on the fact that industry interference is one of the commercial determinants of health, a concept that extends to governmental policies and practices such as trade promotion. Um, it, this is significant when we notice that removal of references to industry interference and commercial determinants of health occurs repeatedly. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, some areas that are new just to draw your attention to. Um, so. The Secretariat will be providing support to countries um, in attaining Target 3.4 as set out in the draft 13th General Programme of Work 2019 to 2023, and you can see some of the solutions that they're focusing on there. But something to particularly draw your attention to in paragraph 15 is that in 2018 and 2019, 
Secretariat will be conducting a review of international experience of NCD prevention and control, including public-private partnerships. Um, they'll identify and disseminate lessons learned, including successful approaches already taken in a number of countries. And I would really urge you to go today to the NCD uh, agenda, uh, the paper for the NCD agenda item, and look at Table Six, um, which outlines a number of solutions that are all be already being implemented to address the challenges that are outlined um, in the table on one of the previous slides. Um, there's a particularly strong focus on alcohol and nutrition in these interventions, on alcohol control and nutrition, it seems, in these slides. Um, so hopefully particularly interesting for some of us around the phone. Um, next slide, please. Um, in terms of preparation for the third, in terms of WHO assignments um, that are due to be completed by the time of the third UN high-level meeting on NCDs, there are three on this slide that you can see are marked as pending. Um, first of all, the, <coughs> the register to publish the contributions of non-state actors uh, to achieve the nine global targets. This has been an ongoing challenge with long-term discussion with little consensus on how it should work or what should happen. Um, it's worth noting that the GCM is moving in a direction that reflects this with partners to the with members of the GCM um, being due to, to publish their own commitments and contributions to achieving the nine global targets, but the broader WHO approach is still TBC. Um, in terms of the midpoint evaluation of progress on the implementation of the Global Action Plan, and um, this was originally there was due to be a a representative group of member states and international partners working during the first quarter of 2018 um, with reports um, with a report for the evaluation uh, submitted to the 71st World Health Assembly. This has now been delayed and the meetings will take place in the third quarter of 2018 um, with results instead reported to the 72nd World Health Assembly in May 2019 through the Executive Board in January 19. So just to keep everybody informed of the timelines there. Um, and then we were apparently due for a third global status uh, report on NCDs in 2016, but this has been delayed as well. The first one was in 2010, and the second one was in 2014. Next slide, please. Um, and just to skim through briefly the, the annexes, encourage everybody to investigate them if they're particularly interested in any one of them. Um, there are four annexes, a report of progress made from May 2016 to November 2017 in implementing the WHO Global Action Plan. And then there's a report of progress made in implementing the WHO GCM Work Plan for 2016 to 2017. Uh, a progress made, uh, especially relevant for the cancer community, in implementing uh, the resolution adopted at last year's WHA on cancer prevention and control in the context of an integrated approach. Annex 4 is the progress report of the UN Interagency Task Force on NCDs, and then there is also an additional paper available on the WHA homepage, which is a preliminary evaluation of the WHO Global Coordination Mechanism. Next slide, please. Um, so just to summarize a few key advocacy takeaways uh, to, to take into discussions that you may be having in Geneva. Um, it's worth noting that we're going to be talking, we'll summarize advocacy takeaways for all the other uh, agenda items that we're discussing right at the end of the WHA section. But being as there are slightly few, uh, being as there are slightly more for the NCD agenda item, we've put them on this one slide here. Um, so if we look back to the process priorities that the NCD Alliance um, had uh, back at the end of 2017, um, we're very glad to see that the UN high level meeting is, of course, taking place in September. We were calling for that from the very start. Um, and also that there will be a civil society hearing taking place at the start of July. In terms of the remaining priorities, uh, we of course still need to be working hard to ensure participation of heads of state and government uh, at the high level meeting. We need to be championing the NCD Alliance's six campaign priorities, of course adapted to your own unique priorities and contexts, and to ensure that, uh, these act that action areas to address these uh, areas are reflected in the outcome document. We would like to see mobilization of both health and non-health sectors, reflecting the need for a multi-sectoral approach. Um, and we also call for member states to participate, as well as in the HLM itself, in the interactive civil society hearing in advance of the UN high-level meeting um, to, to ensure that the meeting is a success. 
Uh, it's worth asking any member states to raise the profile of the high-level meeting at the WHO regional committee meetings, both those that take place prior to the UN high-level meeting and afterwards in terms of both preparation and follow-up to the high-level meeting. Um, and the last one not being directly related to the high-level meeting process, but of course extremely relevant. Uh, we need to be requesting clear guidance on the approach to register contributions from non-state actors. Um, and this must, in no under no circumstances, distract the focus away from the urgent need for policy action. Next slide, please. Excuse me. Um, so to move on to the draft 13th General Program of Work, at the 142nd DB back in January, member states agreed to forward the GPW 13 for consideration by WHA 71. Uh, the EB resolution also requested finalization of the impact framework, um, financial investments, and investment case ahead of WHA 71. The impact framework has si since been updated, and I'll talk in a little bit more detail about that on the subsequent slides. Um, but to our knowledge, there, there hasn't been an updated financial es estimate um, available. Um, just to flag that WHO is due to announce three flagship projects as part of delivering on the GPW. These are around mental health, CVD, specifically focusing on trans fats, and that's due to be launched on Monday, um, and also cervical cancer. The, WA, the World Health Assembly is invited to adopt the draft resolution recommended by the Executive Board, and there's the link for that on the slide there. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, this just provides um, an overview of WHO's uh, 13th GPW, um, and the two not shown particularly clearly on my slide, I hope it's better for some people, but within those strategic priorities in green, um, the priorities related to achieving universal health coverage and promoting healthier populations are of course especially relevant for NCDs in addition to the dedicated uh, platform on NCDs. Next slide, please. Um, to go into a little bit more detail on the impact framework, an updated of the impact framework was released back in March, and it's available on the WHO webpage rather than on the WHA webpage itself. Um, definitely worth highlighting that physical activity is now included, whereas it wasn't before in this impact framework, um, with a target of 7% reduction for persons uh, for in, in adult populations. Um, sadly, the alcohol target has been weakened. Uh, it's now speaking about 7% reduction from 2018 to 2023 uh, instead of a 10% reduction. There's been a salt indicator added, which is fantastic, and the language on childhood obesity has changed from halt to halt and reverse childhood obesity, which is obviously stronger. There's been an age range added to the tobacco reduction target, which I guess actually makes it a slightly more ambitious target to achieve given that tobacco use is relatively low in populations under 15 years in most countries. And there is mention now of, um, of HPV vaccination and mental health, uh, sorry, increased target, sorry, the target coverage for HPV vaccine and mental health services um, has increased from 40 to 50% in both cases. And there is now a target for 80% availability of essential medicines uh, for primary health care included. Um, very relevant for uh, the palliative care community and the availability of oral morphine for people in need of palliative care is now included with a goal to increase this from 25% to 50% throughout the duration, the period in which the GPW is effective. Next slide, please. To move on to health, environment and climate change, uh, there are three reports uh, which is impressive for this particular World Health Assembly. These uh, span the main health, environment, and climate change agenda item, but also a report on the roadmap for an enhanced global response to the adverse effects of health pollution, and also one on human health and biodiversity, which came out of the discussions at uh, EB in January. And the report coincides with the latest air quality update from WHO. Um, with WHO estimating 7 million people die every year from air pollution. This is slightly up from previous estimates of 6.5 million um, and shows that, once again, this is in a similar range to deaths from tobacco. 90% of these deaths are in LMICs, but the statistics that I'd really like to draw your attention to are in the next bullet in bold. Uh, one quarter of all adult deaths from heart disease, 25% from stroke, 43% from COPD, and 29 percent of lung cancer 
are caused by air pollution, and this really makes the case for the NCD community to be more engaged in this um, agenda of environment and air pollution. Um, and then, yeah, just a, a point on taxation below that, uh, which is an example of how we can extrapolate the knowledge that we have in the NCD community uh, to, to environmental risk factors and to learn from them vice versa. Uh, the WHO is invited to note all three of these reports and additionally to provide further guidance on the report on human health and biodiversity. Next slide, please. So on mHealth, um, the report specifically notes the potential for mHealth to reduce premature mortality from NCDs, including through raising awareness of risk factors but also improving management and there's some priority actions for WHO included below. Uh, the WHO is invited to note the report and we're expecting a resolution tabled by India. Next slide, please. I'm sure I've got CVD colleagues on the phone that would be able to do a much better job of this than I am, but we're looking forward certainly to collaborating with WHF in our advocacy around uh, RHD. Um, so in May 2017, Sorry, there was some background noise. Okay, um, so in May 2017, the Executive Board noted an earlier version of the report on RHD, um, and this was drafted by a coalition of 20 countries and contains five recommendations for governments, five for the WHO Secretariat, and three recommendations for civil society. Um, so I encourage you to uh, read into that in more detail if you're interested and also to look out for the advocacy messaging that I'm sure the World Heart Federation will be promoting. Um, and you can see the, the action point there below for the Health Assembly. And with that, um, I would like to pass back to Lucy who will take us through a few of the agenda items that she's leading on. Thanks Lucy, over to you. Thank you Jess. Um, are we on the next slide. Next slide please. Thank you. Okay, so um, really a great development this year. It's been a fairly um, intense year for the physical activity people at WHO and for the physical activity community with um, the development of a draft global action plan on physical activity. Um, little has changed since the executive board back in January where they adopted a draft resolution for consideration at WHO. So it's really exciting to see this global action plan being presented for adoption. Um, and it has a little bit more of an ambitious target than the GPW or the NCD monitoring framework with a 15% reduction in prevalence of physical inactivity in adults and adolescents by 2030, which um, obviously is fantastic for uh, NCDs with SDGs because it's such a, an important risk factor and modifier of NCD outcomes. So um, the action plan has together with it um, some sensible and necessary requests such as for technical support, a new monitoring and evaluation framework to be developed by the end of this year, updating the physical activity recommendations um, for adolescents and adults and also regular reporting requirements. Um, and so uh, yeah, it was a widely consulted uh, action plan and so uh, I'd, I'd say that WHO definitely walked the talk in terms of multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder uh, consultation and um, I'd like to thank everybody who inputted from the network who's on the call today because it was a, an important um, uh, action plan to, to start coming into, um, into global advocacy this year. Next slide please. The, um, the next agenda item was actually covered more extensively at the executive board and it's on maternal infant and young child nutrition. Um, it actually, sorry I've just lost my note. Um, that, sorry, um, the, the main actions for the uh, WHA, WHA are invited, uh, but they are invited to note the report from the executive board around uh, adoption of the extension of the targets to 2030 rather than 2025 and um, approval of the remaining indicators um, on dietary diversity, antenatal iron supplements, availability of nutrition, national um, level provision of counselling services and, and, and uh, trained nutrition professionals. Um, and in addition to that, the, the second report there is on safeguarding against conflict of interest. Um, and again, the, uh, 
WHA will be invited to note that report and we'll be, we're hoping that uh, Member States will consider the full list of uh, GMF indicators in their National Nutrition Monitoring Framework and report accordingly and call for Member States to adopt legal measures to strengthen the implementation of the International Code of Marketing as breast milk substitutes. Um, next slide please and I'm going to hand over to Priya to go through the preparation for the HLM on tuberculosis. Thanks very much Lucy. Um, so for this there are a, a couple different documents that are attached to the, to the WHA considerations on the HLM on TB. Um, the report is an update to one that was considered by the Executive Board in January um, and it notes the background and preparatory process in the lead up to the first high-level high meeting on tuberculosis. Again, that takes place on Wednesday, the 26th of September, one day prior to the HLM on NCD. So member states are invited to adopt a draft resolution that urges them to implement commitments made in the Moscow Declaration on TB, and that was um, the outcome of the Global Ministerial Conference on Ending TB that was held in November 2017. Um, the resolution also requests the Director General and the WHO Secretariat to support the implementation of the Moscow Declaration and provide strategic and technical leadership to member states, and also requests the DG to develop a draft multisectoral accountability framework to accelerate progress to end tuberculosis. Um, the draft framework is not yet online, but we expect it to be um, next week. And the Assembly is invited to adopt the draft resolution and then also consider the draft accountability framework. Next slide, please. Um, as for agenda item 12.3 on women's, children's, and adolescents health, so this is looking at the progress on implementing the global strategy for women, children, and adolescents. Um, and this is an update to the report that was considered by the Executive Board in January. And it contains information um, regarding progress made in implementing two WHO resolutions from, I believe, 2004 and 2006, 2006 on reproductive health and interpersonal violence. So it notes several initiatives to address reproductive health, including the UN Joint Global Program on Cervical Cancer Prevention and Control, uh, and how that program is critical for ensuring reproductive health, and it helps countries to prioritize actions for optimal results to eliminate cervical cancer. On the interpersonal violence side, uh, the report notes that WHO provides technical assistance and guidance to member states to facilitate the adoption of clinical and policy guidelines and training tools to address gender-based violence. Um, since the implementation and, and sort of the adoption of the global strategy, each year the, the, um, the report focus on a specific act aspect of the global strategy. So this year there's quite a focus on early childhood development. Um, and it notes quite a few different things, including the nutritional aspect and the impact of the environment on child health and development. One thing to note there is that um, WHO will publish technical guidance and training tools on air pollution and child health this year. So I think that's just you know, another, another example of how air pollution as a risk factor for NCDs is really becoming more and more um, part of the discussion. Um, also, as part of this early childhood development focus, um, the nutrition focus is, of course, there. Um, they, uh, particularly on the first thousand days, and it notes that the global framework for nurturing care will be launched around um, May 20th, so just prior to the opening of, of the uh, assembly this year. So the Secretariat has also requested to prepare a future version of the Global Strategy Implementation Report with a focus on midwifery, care, and universal health coverage, and the Assembly is invited to note the report. Um, so I will pass it over to Jess again. Thank you very much, Priya. Um, so just to run through, uh, I mentioned that we had some advocacy takeaways from the other agenda items that we discussed today. Um, so these are on the following slides. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so for 11.1 .1 on the draft general program of work, um, particularly worthwhile commending the updated impact framework with the exception of that weakened target on alcohol consumption. Uh, for health, environment, and climate change, uh, we'd really like to see implementation of fiscal policies that are commensurate with the threat of health-harming industries. 
Um, of course, that caution is exercised against industry interference at national level. We see so many parallels here with tobacco and big food and bev and alcohol. Uh, with, for example, the fossil fuel industry or even the pesticide industry, um, and then to elevate environmental health priorities at the 2018 UN high-level political forum, which is taking place in July. Uh, that's focused on environmental um, areas, so we're trying to make the case for how health and environmental co-benefit actions can be beneficial for both different sectors. Uh, for the HLM on TB, we obviously urge member states to consider this opportunity to highlight the linkages between TB and NCDs and capitalize on co-benefit interventions. Um, for physical activity, we recommend endorsement of the Global Action Plan on physical activity, um, encourage collaboration in pursuit of the target to reduce physical activity by 15%, and um, urge adequate resourcing for physical activity uh, to support the implementation of the Global Action Plan. And we look forward to uh, seeing the, the M&E framework. Um, and finally, we encourage everybody to take part in the, <laughs> in the Walk the Talk event uh, taking place on Sunday the 20th, which I'll talk about more in a moment. Um, on 12.3, the global strategy, sorry, next slide, please. On the global strategy for women's children and adolescents' health, and we're very keen to see development and implementation of integrated policies to promote early childhood development that build on the interlinkages between the RMNCAH and NCD agendas. For mHealth, um, we want to see creation of platforms at national or regional level to evaluate existing mHealth tools. There's an awful lot out there, and it's important to uh, understand which are safe and effective to reduce duplicity and scale up good practice. Um, education of healthcare professionals, there seems to be a understandably a degree of suspicion around whether M Health is out to cannibalize existing mechanisms of healthcare delivery, but in fact it's purely complementary. Um, and just important to understand that anybody in, uh, involved in healthcare delivery understands that, so there's education to be done there. Um, to carefully regulate the use of M Health tools to ensure proper protection and use of personal data. M Health generates a huge amount of um, personal data which um, has massive potential for, for shaping future policy interventions in healthcare delivery systems, but needs to be used in a proper and safe way. Um, for maternal, infant, and young child nutrition, I call on member states to consider the full list of the global monitoring framework indicators and to integrate them into their own national nutrition monitoring and reporting. Well, for more member states to adopt legal measures to strengthen implementation and monitoring of the International Code of Mark the code. Um, and on rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease, again, we defer to the World Heart Federation for leadership on this, but especially important to improve monitoring of RHD and prevention and treatment and to allocate sustainable financial resources alongside other NCDs. Next slide, please. So to move on to some of the events happening um, around the World Health Assembly, um, the very first one begins even before WHA begins itself. It's the Walk the Talk event um, on Sunday the 20th of May in the Place du Nation. And it's for the first time, Entity Alliance will have strong on-the-ground presence for enough. Uh, this, I guess, will act as the, the in-person launch of the campaign. And we're in full support of this exciting initiative of WHO under Dr. Tedros's leadership and encourage everyone, whether in Geneva or not, to get out and move on the 20th of May and tell the world that we as the NCD community are walking the talk, promoting health football and WHO's 70th anniversary and, of course, physical activity for NCD prevention and wider health. Um, we'll have a booth alongside partners and we'll be walking in a team with the mantra, together we are stronger, together we can beat NCDs. Next slide, please. Um, we've got over, we, <laughs> there will be over 25 NCD related side events at the WHA this year. This is something of a record. Um, just to pick out a few of the NCD Alliance events, um, there's the Health for All Challenge booth that I've just mentioned uh, on Sunday the 20th of May. Um, then our usual NCD Alliance Civil Society uh, dedicated advocacy briefing on the same afternoon. On Monday the 21st, we're hosting a, um, a small roundtable um, on integrated care entitled Healthcare for the People, Not Silos for Diseases. Um, and then that evening will be the NCD Alliance's main side event at the Intercontinental Hotel. Um, and we uh, strongly encourage anybody who's in town to, to come and join us there. We'd love to see you. 
on Wednesday the 23rd, um, we've got a side event on M Health, um, the impact of digital health on entities and universal health coverage. And of course, many of these are in collaboration with our partners. So I'm just skipping through because I think we're running towards the end of time now. Um, on Thursday, um, side event um, on psoriasis, happier this health, and NCDs mind the gap. Um, and on Friday, 25th, um, we're involved in a side event on diabetes and pregnancy. Next slide, please. Um, in addition to, to these side events, uh, many of which are outside the Palais, there are official member state side events within the Palais, um, which are listed on here. And the one to particularly draw your attention to is the one on Tuesday the, the 22nd. Um, tackling NCDs is a major contribution to universal health coverage. Uh, regulatory, are regulatory interventions a cost-effective alternative? Um, we've only listed NCD-related side events um, on this page, um, but uh, there are many, many more to be seen online. Uh, so I encourage you to look out for the updated side event schedule when it becomes available. Um, and they're all under the, the Health for All theme. Next slide, please. A um, snapshot of other NCD-related side events, uh, in addition to those organized by NCDA and those organized by member states. Um, on, I, in fact, I, I, I might not read through all of these right now, but encourage you to, to look at them after the meeting. You can see after the webinar, there, you can see there's a fantastic range, um, both in terms of academic evidence, in terms of policy, and in terms of implementation. Um, but yeah. Next slide, please. You can see that there is um, a, a full calendar of all of these events available on the uh, NCD Alliance's website on our dedicated WHA page, and this is updated regularly. Uh, please do let us know if there's anything not currently included in that full calendar uh, that we should be including. We would love to hear from you and help to promote it. If I could pass back to Lucy now to take us through communications, please. Thank you very much, Jeff. And um, I'll try to be quick. A lot of the information there is actually hyperlinked, so I won't talk through everything. Um, but most important in terms of communications for WHA is to try and keep NCDs up trending around WHA 71. So whenever people are talking about uh, hashtag WHA 71 on social media, please remember to include NCDs and enough NCDs with hashtags. Um, last year we were amongst the top influencers and it was a pretty difficult year to do that because of the uh, DG elections. So let's see if we, can, if we can maintain that status this year, especially because it's such an important year for NCDs. We'll be mainly using Twitter for live coverage, sharing of thematic key messages, advocacy messages, statements, um, and so on, event coverage, uh, speaker quotes uh, from events breaking news, um, and amplifying your messages as well. So please do remember to keep track of things on Twitter. Um, and do keep an eye on other social media that you may happen to be using. Our focus this year will be on the high-level meeting and enough, but obviously there are other agenda items that are relevant that we'll, we'll be uh, making sure our messages are clear on. We'll be sharing a communications plan with the network in the next week, which will include some suggested messages. Um, and any publications of relevance that will be either coming out or could be of interest to people. Next slide, please. And um, finally, this is just a, a quick tip sheet that some of you may already be familiar with, with from last year. Um, we put out a, um, a Twitter pocket guide with the fantastic team at UICC. And this just gathers up some of those key points. So just uh, not using too many hashtags, although it has made it easier this year with the uh, larger number of characters allowed in Twitter. Um, integrating other trending hashtags, um, using the social media that you happen to be on, tagging people and organizations that, um, that are relevant and important, interacting with people, sharing photos for people who can't happen to be there on the ground um, and would like to know what's happening in Geneva. Um, and yeah, don't forget to integrate that enough messaging into your tweets about, uh, about advocacy. I'll uh, leave it there so we can keep moving and wrap up. Any questions? Thank you. Great. Thank, thanks Lucy, thanks Jess, thanks Priya for a really in-depth and detailed um, presentation. I know, I know there's a lot of information there we just shared, but obviously um, these webinars are useful just to kind of go blow by blow through each of the agenda items and talk you through. 
the background and kind of some of our um, advocacy messages for, for each of them. So thanks for really detailed um, presentations. I think to kind of try and sum up WHA this year, I think it's, um, you know, obviously anniversary of 70th anniversary of WHO is the big deal. Um, Health for All, uh, Walk the Talk event will be a great opportunity. General programme of work, really, you know, important document will be the guiding document for WHO over the next five years. Um, and obviously NCDs being a real priority issue within that, which is great. Um, obviously NCDs, as Jess was talking about, heads of government, heads of state attending the high level meeting is the big push. And that's what we're hoping to see in the resolution that is being developed um, by Finland and Uruguay and a couple of other governments. The uh, adoption of an RHD resolution, a big step forward for, for, for that side of things, as well as the Physical Activity Action Plan. And then in addition, um, we're also aware that there's going to be a resolution on infant and young child feeding, which is um, the agenda item that Lucy presented on, um, which is being led by Ecuador. So a huge amount on NCDs, I think it's fair to say, um, and I think that's reflected by that really big number of side events that um, Jess was running through at the end there. Please have a look at our calendar um, if you haven't already um, seen it. Um, it's, it's an impressive beast this year, I have to say, so great to see the NCD community out in force. Um, we've got time for a few questions. A couple have come in. Um, so, Jess, when, when you were talking about the NCD paper at the beginning, where you were talking about, you know, where we are today, the challenges and the obstacles, and then preparations for the high-level meeting, something you mentioned in terms of obstacles was uh, that there was a removal of, of mention of industry interference and the commercial determinants of health in this version of the paper. Um, so Helen's question is, you know, what do you think this means? What's the inter interpretation of this, and and what is the impact on what we're trying to achieve? Thanks, Helen, for that. Um, so, so we see changes like this as a result of member states that are particularly close to or pro industry being influenced by the tobacco, alcohol, and food and beverages, food, food and beverage industries in their countries. Um, and this is in response to the fact. We believe that references to industry interference will ultimately push the industry further out of policy making when they'd much prefer to be involved. So from our perspective, it's preferable to have language like that included, whereas obviously the industry is very much against it. I think, I think the other thing on that is that I think the, the whole concept of the commercial determinants of health is a fairly new um, a fairly new thing, which you know, a few, lots of academics are really getting in, getting in and behind, and, and um, developing more around, particularly people like uh, Dr. Elona Kickbush from the Graduate Institute. So I, I think until we've got a really clear concept, definition, approach to the commercial determinants of health, uh, there'll be continuous kind of pushback, perhaps from 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 some governments and and perhaps some some industries as well, obviously. Um, we have a we have a comment rather than a question. Um, thanks, Michelle from Entity Child, just to promote the Entity Child's youth leaders um, are promoting a youth walk the talk for the 20th of May. So um, Lucy was talking about the the World Health Assembly WHO walk the talk event on the Sunday, which I hope you'll all be joining us for. Michelle and the Entity Child um, organisation are doing their own. Um, youth version, um, both in Geneva and globally, which is fantastic. Um, and they're working with, with us at the NCD Alliance to integrate the Enough NCDs campaign. So please look out for more information about that so that we can see activity not just in Geneva and Switzerland, but, but worldwide from youth and, and, and everyone. Um, it's a great opportunity to really see some really good mobilization around NCDs, I think. Um, I don't think we've got any more questions coming in, um, which leads us to 4.30 on the dot. So um, if we could just move to the last last slide, um, which is just a bit of a look ahead on some of the key dates. Um, thank you. So just a, an, in, in, wrapping up um, in terms of upcoming dates, just to highlight a few for you for your calendars. As I say, walk the talk event on the Sunday of WHA. Please, please do reach out to us if you're planning to be at WHA. We'd love to have you involved both on the Sunday and obviously throughout the activities um, in the week. Um, obviously, the World Health Assembly dates there, 21st to 26th. Um, Priya was talking about the accreditation process for the high-level meeting. Really important date there for anyone that's not um, already um, accredited to ECOSOC that you've got to apply by the 19th, 18th of May, sorry, and that's for both the civil society hearing and the high-level meeting itself. World No Tobacco Day coming up at the end of the month, um, which is another key opportunity to be pushing the NCD messages. Um, we will be having our no next 
NCDA webinar um, probably at the end of um, June, just before the civil society hearing um, in New York. Um, so a good opportunity to recap on WHA and to be looking ahead. Lucy mentioned near the beginning there, as part of our Enough campaign, that we're planning a, a thunderclap digital activation day on the 14th of June. So more details to follow um, on that. And then we suddenly move into to the real nuts and bolts of the high-level meeting, which is essentially the negotiations on the outcome document, expecting that to take shape between the middle of June and the end of um, July. That's obviously TBC on a lot of different factors, but that's what we're aware of um, at this stage, and we'll keep you up to date of, of how developments of the outcome document is, is proceeding in New York. Um, 5th of July, big date for us as civil society, uh, the interactive hearing in New York. Um, and then obviously 27th of September um, coming around very fast is the high level meeting itself. So that's just a quick look ahead um, for some of the key dates that are coming up. So I think uh, we will finish there. Um, there's no more questions that have, have been coming in. So let me thank uh, Lucy, Jess and Priya for the really excellent presentations. As I said, we'll be uploading the recording of the webinar as well as the slides onto our website for you to look and all the hyperlinks will be active for you to click through to the different resources we've talked through. And really look forward to seeing everybody at the World Health Assembly that, that will be there. Thanks very much. Goodbye. And that will conclude today's call. We thank you for your participation.